Hey everyone, welcome to the UE4 Quick Tips and Tricks series after a longer break. And recently I've been quite busy with other personal projects, such as Scavenger's Loot Pack. It's a pack for everyone who loves to scavenge, craft or explore. So if you're making an adventure, survival or horror game, you should definitely check it out. I made an open wishlist, so feel free to vote or suggest new assets to be added in the future updates. Alright, let's start with new tips. Number 18. Math expression in text input fields. This one is especially useful for precise value editing. Say you want to move an object precisely, and a grid snap doesn't help you here. And yes, Unreal Engine supports math expressions in text fields. Ok, let's make a copy of this first aid kit and place so it's close to the first one. Let me check its dimension. Um, it has 28 centimeters, so we need to use x value. Simply go to the end of the line and type plus 28 and hit enter. Ok, so actually we can use a little margin so they are not touching. You can use multiple expressions in one line, so let's undo that. Type plus 28 plus 0 0.5. Yeah, that's better. Of course, I could use transform, delta transform, to move my object, but I prefer using details panel. Delta transform is useful when you're, you've got multiple objects selected and their values are different. Using math expression won't work in that case. So generally, any basic math operation can be used here, whether it's adding, subtraction, multiplication or division. And it works in any text input fields, like let's scale this chair down four times. Yeah, so we've got this tiny chair. And yeah, it works also with material inputs, notes, blueprints and so on. Number 19. Sounds playback. I'm not sure how many of you work with sounds in UE4, but if you did, knowing this little tip or shortcut saves a tons of time. I'm not a sound designer, but I have to use sounds from time to time. And normally, I would select a sound cue or sound wave in the content browser, right click on it and hit play. Then do the same thing with every other sounds I wanted to preview. By the time I previewed the last one, I already forgot what was the first one. So simple solution, hit spacebar while a sound is selected. Ugh. And it works to stop the preview as well, so yeah. Press space and enjoy sounds in UE4. Number 20. Adding incompatible content from Marketplace. Ok, so this one is for everyone who purchased some packages from the UE Marketplace, but the content is not compatible with their editor version. That was more common issue a couple months back, where marketplace compatibility updates were delayed and people complained that they cannot add the content to their projects. That's totally understandable. Now market marketplace team reacts much faster, at least at my front. However, it's good to know about this anyway, especially if you are adding content to preview version of the editor. Ok, let's say I have a preview version installed. 4.13 in this case, and I want to use a package that I own. This version is not officially out, and as you may guess, this pack is not compatible with it. However, we can still add it. Click on a Add to Project button. As you can see, there isn't 4.13 projects on the list I want to add to. So let's go ahead and click Show all projects. Now, it appears on the list, but we still need to choose the closest engine version. It will be 4.12 in my case. And very important note here. This workaround won't help you with every pack. Say you've got some blueprints assets that uses deprecated functions and it's not and they are not available in the newest engine version or Epic simply made some optimization to the code. So whatever the reason is, you need to be aware that there is a chance that your pack won't work. However, when it comes to assets like meshes, materials, textures, you are most likely ok to go. Number 21. Meshes build scale. When you are building a level with static meshes and you feel that the size of an object is a little bit off, 
it's too small or too big and you are sure that you will have to scale it up or down every time you drag and drop it from the content browser, you can use build scale property to define let's call it a default size. To do it, open a static mesh editor and look for build settings. Here you can find the build scale vector and by default it's set to 1 in each axis. Ok, let's say I want this gear to be smaller, like 0.62 or whatever in every axis. Let's copy the value and let's paste it here. Let's go ahead and apply changes. As you can see, the gear got even smaller. It's because we need to set the scale back to 1. So now value of 1 is the value of what we set in the build scale. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but that's how it works. Now every new gear I import is smaller compared to the one we had before. It's useful when you've got multiple modular pieces and you've got plenty of them in your level. Ok, thanks for watching and if you found any of these tips useful, leave a like and see you next time.